Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave. This tutorial is part of a beginner CSS series. I'll be using the Chrome web browser, the Visual Studio Code editor, and the live server extension for Visual Studio Code to view the web page. There are links to these tools, starter code files, and all resources in the description below. Let's build a mini project for beginners. After completing several lessons in this CSS tutorial series, I think it's a good idea to bring all of these different pieces together and apply what you've learned. I've got Visual Studio Code open, and in the starter code, you can see I have an index.html file, and when we look at the body of this index file, you can see it has a nav element, and inside the nav element, we have an h2 and a unordered list, and this unordered list has several list items, all have their own anchor links, and it doesn't really matter where they're linking to today, I just have it linking to our other pages one and two that were there just to link to in previous tutorials. But what we have is a list of appetizers, entrees, desserts, beverages, and then it just says about. Things you might actually find on a menu in a restaurant as well as a menu on a restaurant's website. And then at the very bottom here, we have one paragraph that says learn more about amazing foods. And I just linked to an article on amazing foods. That's because we wanna have one link that is not in the list. So we can select it separately or avoid selecting it if we want to. So what I'm going to do now is drag Visual Studio Code to the left and we can see Chrome on the right. I'm using the live server extension so we'll immediately see any changes. And here's our basic page, really no styles applied yet. I'll press Control B to hide the file tree and click on the style.css. You can see we're importing the Roboto font from Google Fonts like we learned how to do in the typography chapter, but we're not even using it yet. So really no styles applied to the index.html. So let's start now. And if you remember from the box model chapter, we covered a small CSS reset. So the first thing I'm going to do is apply that reset. So a margin of zero, padding of zero, and then we'll set box sizing to border box. And when we save, this will eliminate some default styles. And now we can see everything is way up here in the corner. So any of that default padding and margin is gone. Now let's select the body and we'll add a few styles to it that will be inherited throughout the page. However, the first one will not be, it just applies to the body and that's to put just a little bit of a margin there. I actually want rim and that way when we save, it pushes the text away from the top and the left just a little bit. Okay, after that, we're going to go ahead and set the font family. So we start using that Roboto font and we'll set it to Roboto with a fallback of sans serif. And we can save that change and instantly we see the, the uh, font change over there to the right. After that, I want to go ahead and align the text for everything on this page to the center. Normally, we might put that just inside of one area we were building, but in this case, in this example, everything on the page will be centered for our menu. And now you can see that centered over there on the right. Okay, if we look back at our HTML, notice we're using a nav element inside the body. So the next thing we're going to select in our CSS is the nav element. I'll scroll up just a little bit and select the nav. Let's put a border around the nav. So we'll say border, two pixels, solid, and then we'll choose 333, three, three, which is just a little bit lighter shade of black instead of 000. zero, zero. So if we save that, you can see the border around our nav now. Now let's add a border radius, and that will let us round the corners off just a little bit. We'll set that to two rem, and when we save, you can see those corners now change to rounded corners. We learned about border and border radius in our box model lesson. We also learned about margin. I'll set the margin for the top of the nav to zero. I'm going to set the margin for the left and the right to auto, which will center it if our page is wide enough and it needs to be in the center. And that means the margin will eat up the space that's left on the left and the right. And then we'll also have a margin on the bottom of one rem. Now we won't notice that auto spacing because right now the nav is a block level element. So it has 100% width, except for the little bit of margin that we provided on the body here. So we have some space. But if we set a max width, for this to let's set it to 600 pixels. 
Now if we expand the page, the nav element won't expand to the full 100% width. So let me grab this and drag it over so it takes up the full page. And we can see now that our nav is not the full width of the page. So we have limited it to a max width of 600 pixels and setting the margin to auto on the left and the right has resulted in centering the nav on our page. Notice we also haven't styled the list item yet, so we see these bullet points here outside of the nav. We've centered our text, but as we learned in the list tutorial, that the bullet points here are set to default to be on the outside, if we want them at all, and I think we're going to remove them. So I'll pull this back over to the right, and we'll continue styling the page. I'll scroll up just a little bit, but before we move on from the nav, we can set some typography here that will be inherited. So let's set the font size now to 3 rem, and let's set the line height to 7 rem. And when we save, things should be much bigger. Looking back at our index HTML again, now inside the nav, we have an H2 before we get to the unordered list. So let's style that H2. The first thing we'll do is give it just a little bit of padding. So we'll set that to 1 rem, and now let's set a well, let's set a background color first, and we'll set this to gold. So if we save, now we can see we have a background color on our H1, and it has the full width of the nav because it's a block level element, so it has 100% width of what's available to it. But notice our border radius is not being respected up here. The gold continues to look like a square, although we set a border radius on the nav to have those curled or rounded corners. So now we need to adjust the border radius here on our H2 as well. And what we'll do is start in the top left. We'll set this to 2 rem, and now the top right is also 2 rem because that's where the curved corners are. Then we'll have 0 on the bottom right and 0 on the bottom left because that still needs to be the square corners. So we'll save, and now notice the gold matches the curve of our menu on the top left and top right. Okay, I'll scroll up for some more room and we're ready to start styling our unordered list. So we'll put a UL here. The first thing we want to look at is the list style position. I mentioned those bullets before. If we put them inside, we can now see them, but we don't really want them, do we? So we don't really need the list style position. I just brought that in so we could see that yes, they are still there. What we want to do is say list style type, and then just set that to none, and they will disappear. Now we can apply a style to each list item, so we'll say li, and here we're just going to select the border top, and we'll set this to one pixel, solid and 333 to match the outer border of the nav. And now we have some nice separation here between each of our list items. Okay, next we want to style the links that are inside of our list. But notice we have a link that is not inside the list. Down here it says learn more about amazing foods. So we do not want to select this link. So in order to select the links that are only inside the list, we'll start with list item and then the anchor tag. And note we also want to select list item, the anchor tag, and the visited pseudo class. And then here we're going to say text decoration, set that to none, and we'll set the color to that 333 color. So we have a dark color. And so now we have a dark color here for visited links and links that haven't been visited. So let's quickly visit one. We just have our simple page two. We go back and it remains the same color. Let's scroll up for some more room again. And now we'll go ahead and style some other pseudo classes here. So we'll have the hover pseudo class and we'll also have the focus pseudo class. And for those, we'll set the background to the 333. So just the opposite. And here we'll set the color to white smoke, which is just a little bit of an off-white color. And let's set the cursor to pointer. And now, when we select that or save that, now we should see the mouse over changes. And so now 
the text is that white smoke color and we get a black background. But that's not really what we want. We don't want it just on the words. We want it on the full list item. So we're going to have to make a change to make that happen. So above where the styling began on the different anchor tags in the list item, I'm going to say LI with the anchor tag and only that, not the visited pseudo class. So this is a separate selector. We'll set this to display block, which display is a property we haven't covered yet in a previous module, but we did if you took the beginner's HTML course as well. We did cover block display and inline display. So this is a block level element. Normally the anchor tag is an inline level element. So we are changing it to a block level element. The bonus here is that block level elements have 100% width. So when I save this, this will change. And now when I mouse over any one of these, this anchor tag has the full width and is filling the entire space here of each one of these list items. So now this makes a big difference. So I don't even have to click on the text. I could click just over here to the left and we still go to page one. So everything works there as expected, but there's still one change we need to make. Can you guess what it is? Here's a hint. It's right here. Look at those bottom corners. They're not rounding either. They're not respecting that border radius that we set on the nav. So we need to make a change to help enforce that as well. I'm going to scroll up. So this will be the last thing we put in our file. This is a little more difficult than when we rounded the corners for the H2 because the H2 is easy to select. It was the only one on the page. But what about this bottom one, we have five different list items. So how do we just select the last list item? We're going to do that with a pseudo selector and this will be called last dash child. And then we can go ahead and I guess we need to put the A there. And then under that we can say border dash radius. And now it will be zero on the top because that still needs to be a square zero on the top right as well. So top left, top right. Now this is bottom right, needs to have that same two rem setting and then bottom left as well. So let's save and now let's mouse over and you can see that the border radius is respected here as we mouse over the list items. So there is our basic menu and we selected all of these without changing the link that we had here in the bottom. So again, a beginner's project, but it certainly showed you how to apply some of the different things we've learned up to this point. We'll be learning more about that display property that we introduced and there's a lot more yet to learn about CSS too. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.